Dear committee, dear ladies and gentlemen, dear World Wide Web, I'm pleased to be able to present my pre-scientific work in this context today. Due to the unfortunate circumstance of the spread of COVID-19, bringing the entire world to a standstill, the majority of school leavers this year will not be able to present their scientific work as part of the matriculation examination here in Austria. And this is a pity on so many levels. Nevertheless, I do not want to miss presenting and disseminating my work now situated here in beautiful Lower Austria. So here we go. Ionic liquids are regarded as a special class of substances that is hardly known from everyday life. They are salts that are typically liquid below 100 degrees Celsius, some of them even below room temperature, and this without the addition of any electrolyte. You see electrostatic forces predominate as interactions between charged particles. Opposite charges, plus and minus, attract each other, and a stable crystal lattice forms, such as illustrated here or with this um, model of my quarantine molecule kit. And these lattices are extraordinarily stable. Common table salt, sodium chloride, for example, only melts at 800 degrees centigrade. The melting point of ionic liquids, however, lays far below that of most salts. And this is because the ions are large, bulky, asymmetrical components whose charge is distributed over a wide space. And this inevitably leads to weaker interactions as well as a destabilized crystal structure and a lower melting point. Theoretically, there are millions of ionic liquids. The respective components can be combined as desired. Over the course of my work, however, I looked at derivatives of a nitrogen-containing aromatic heterocycle, the N-methyl imidazole. If this N-methyl or 1-methyl imidazole is subjected to a quaternization reaction, which is a nucleophilic substitution of second order, and mixed with a haloalkane, for example here with chlorobutane, the nitrogen nucleophile attacks the positively polarized carbon atom of the alkyl chain. And after some hours of stirring at an increased temperature and under protective atmosphere, a uh, positively charged imidazolium ion is formed. And what is interesting to mention here is that we've got a separate positive, positively and negatively charged moiety, a salt, and this salt melts at mellow 60 degrees centigrade. An ionic liquid is born, and over the course of different syntheses, five ionic liquids were produced. Two imidazolium salts with halides, bromide and chloride, and after some ion exchange and modification with hydrogen sulfate or the bulky bistrifluoromethane sulfone imid as a counter ion. What a mouthful. After analysis and processing and purification, they were used in several applications that fell under the theme, or, uh, the theme of organic synthesis and catalysis as well as extraction. For the former, I looked at a CC coupling reaction between aromatics and alkenes, also known under the name uh, of the famous Heck reaction, and the formulation of aniline under carbon dioxide atmosphere. Furthermore, valuable platinum group metals were extracted from used car catalyst material. Uh, after adding it to a bronsted acidic ionic liquid as well as an oxidizing agent. What I found to be particularly interesting and um, accessible in this, in this sense was the extraction of limonene from orange peels, which is supposed to illustrate the usage in biomass processing. Orange peel is one of the, main, of the main waste products of the production of orange juice, which is why there's a great effort to isolate the valuable fragrance, which is also used in perfumes, to, from the waste under more benign conditions. And bimem chloride makes this possible, this is this salt here, after grating the peel, something I came to grips with in the laboratory's own kitchen, and the addition of the salt, the sample was heated to 60 degrees Celsius, stirred, distilled, and the volatile substance was isolated and dried. The extractant ionic liquid, however, remained in the flask and could, be could and can be cleaned and reused without that much separation effort. 
Ionic liquids were discovered a good 100 years ago. The research thereof really got going only in the last 20 to 25 years. They are stable, generally non-volatile and non-flammable. And this makes them particularly interesting for the use as potential electrolytes in organic synthesis and the processing of biomass. The role that these substances will play in the future in the world has not yet been determined. Everything eventually comes to discovering or identifying a multitude of interesting applications. And furthermore, finding a suitable tunable ionic liquid for that very process. And it's an exciting process. And in some instances, you could even say that, that a whole new way of perceiving the field of applied organic synthesis is to be paved. And my work has contributed to this. Thank you. And finally, look forward to a lively discussion in the comments down below and wish you all a happy Easter. <laughs>